What hast thou there? The cords that Romeo bid thee fetch. What's she talking about the cords that Romeo was supposed to, told you to go get? What, what? The rope ladder? The rope ladder, yes. Uh, that the nurse, part of the plan was the nurse needed this rope ladder so that Romeo could get to Juliet this evening. Um, and Juliet's going to be able to tell by the nurse's face and her tone of voice that she's upset and something's wrong. I, I the cords. And me, what news? Why dost thou wring thy hands? Oh, well, they, he's dead. He's dead, he's dead. We are undone, lady, we are undone. Alack the day, he's gone, he's killed, he's dead. Who is Juliet going to think she's speaking about? Romeo. Romeo, she gets completely confused. Can heaven be so envious? Romeo can, though heaven cannot. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, whoever would have thought it. Romeo, of what devil art thou that dost torment me thus? This torture should be roared in dismal hell. Has Romeo slain himself? Now she's confused. Oh, God, did Romeo kill himself? I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Tell me yes or no. Did he do it or not? I, I don't know whether to be happy or sad. Say thou but I, and that fair vow or I shall poison more than the death-darting eye of a cockatrice. I am not I, if there be such an I. Or those eyes shut that make thee answer I. If he be slain, say I, or if not, no. Brief sounds determine of my weal or woe. I saw the wound, I saw it with mine eyes. God save the mark, here on his manly breast. A piteous corpse, a bloody piteous corpse. Pale, pale as ashes, all bedaubed in blood, all in gore blood. I swooned at the sight. Oh, break my heart. Poor bankrupt break at once. To prison eyes ne'er look on liberty. Vile earth to earth resign and motion here. And thou and Romeo press one heavy beer. Oh, I want to die. I want to die if my Romeo's dead. I want to die too. And now all of a sudden this is how the newspaper nurse starts talking about Sybil. Juliet's still confused. She still thinks Romeo's dead. And so now the nurse is yelling about Tibbles, and she's like, Tibble, wait, wait, Tibble, Tibble too? Tibble's dead too? And she's very confused. Yeah. Oh, Tibble, Tibble the best spread my hand. Oh, courteous Tibble, honest gentleman that ever I should live to see me dead. What storm is this that blows so contrary? Is Romeo slaughter and is Tibble sore. dead? My dear loved cousin and my dearer lord? Then dreadful trumpet sound the general doom. For who is living if those two are gone? Tybalt is gone, and Romeo banished. Romeo that killed him, he is banished. Oh God, did Romeo's hand shed Tybalt's blood? It did. It did, alas, the day it did. Now, watch Juliet here. Listen to her words carefully and see if you can figure out who she's talking about. Is she talking about Tybalt, or is she talking about Romeo? Gustave heart, hid with a flowering face. Did ever dragon keep so fair a cave? Beautiful tyrant, fiend, angelical, dove-feathered raven, wolvish ravening lamb, despise its substance of divinest show, just opposite to what thou justly seemst, a damned saint, an honorable villain, Oh, nature, what hadst thou to do in hell when thou didst bower the spirit of a fiend in mortal paradise of such sweet flesh? Was that a book containing such vile matter so fairly bound? Oh, the deceit should dwell in such a gorgeous palace. Who is the deceit? Who is the gorgeous palace? Romeo is the gorgeous palace. How could something so beautiful on the outside be so bad on the inside, right? That's what she's thinking. And so the nurse says, I know, I know. All men are liars. She can't trust one of them. Shameful, shameful Romeo. And then all of a sudden Juliet's like, hey, hold on here. Don't you talk about my husband like that. There's no trust. No faith, no honesty in men, all perjured, all forsworn, all not all dissemblers. Oh, because my man gave me some aqua vitae. These griefs, these woes, these sorrows make me old. Shame come to Romeo. Blister be thy tongue for such a wish. He was not born to shame. 
Upon his brow shame is ashamed to sit. For tis a throne where honor may be crowned, sole monarch of the universal earth. Oh, what a beast was I to chide at him. Will you speak well of him that killed your cousin? I shouldn't have scolded him. And the nurse says, well, you're going to talk nicely about the person who killed your cousin? And Juliet says, well, shall I speak ill of the person who is my husband? It is not my responsibility as his wife to defend him, to assume that he must have a reason for doing what he's done? Shall I speak ill of him that is my husband? Oh, poor my lord. What tongue shall smooth thy name when I, thy three hours' wife, have mangled it? Wherefore, villain, didst thou kill my cousin? That villain cousin would have killed my husband. Back, foolish tears. Back to your native spring. Your tributary drops belong to woe, which you mistaking offer up to joy. Right, so, uh, my... My um, my villain cousin would have killed my husband, but my husband killed him, so I should be happy. So back, tears, back. You're crying for the wrong reason. I should be joyful. My husband lives that Tybalt would have slain, and Tybalt's dead that would have slain my husband. All this is comfort. Wherefore weep I then? I should be comforted. For some reason, I feel like crying still, because I think there was something you said. Something I'm trying to forget, but it keeps coming back to my mind. You said Romeo's vanished. Oh, crap. Vanished? What, what are we going to do now? It's really confused. You know, what, what, what? How can I be his wife? Some word there was. Worser than Tybalt's death that murdered me. I would forget it fain. But, oh, it presses to my memory. I damn the guilty deeds to sinners' minds. Tybalt is dead, and Romeo banish it. That banish it, that one word banish it, hath slain ten thousand Tybalts. Tybalt's death was woe enough if it had ended there. Or if sour woe delights in fellowship and need thee will be ranked with other griefs. Why followed not when she said Tybalt's dead? Thy father or thy mother, nay, or both. Which modern lamentation might have moved. Yeah, so um, if, she, if she was going to say Tybalt's dead, why didn't she just say my father's dead or my mother's dead or maybe even both of them are dead? Because that would have been sad enough. But if I look back on what she said, Tybalt's death was followed by Romeo's banishment. To speak that word is like saying my mom, my dad, my dad Tybalt, me, Romeo, we're all dead. Oh, this is horrible, horrible. But with a rearward Jesus. following Tybalt's death, Romeo is banished. To speak that word is father, mother, Tybalt, Romeo, Juliet, all slain, all dead. Romeo is banished. There is no end, no limit, measure, bound in that word's death. No words can that woe sound. There is my father and my mother, nurse, weeping and wailing over Tybalt's corse. Will you go to them? I will bring you thither. Wash they his wounds with tears? Mine shall be spent when theirs are dry for Romeo's banishment. No, no, don't take me there. I'm going to be crying long after them over Romeo's banishment. And then she says, you know what? You better just take that rope ladder and get rid of it. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to use it. I'm going to die a virgin. Even though I'm a bride, I'm going to die a virgin. And then she says, you know what? I'm going to go to my wedding bed anyway tonight, and death is going to take me instead of my husband taking my virginity. And uh, the nurse is like, wait a minute, wait a minute, because that kind of sounds like she's going to hurt herself, right? I'm going to hurt myself. So the nurse is like, uh, no, let's not do anything desperate. I think I can help you. Take up those cords. Poor ropes, you are beguiled, both you and I, for Romeo is exiled. He made you for a highway to my bed, but I, a maid, die maiden widowed. Come, cords. Come, nurse. I'll to my wedding bed, and death, not Romeo, take my maidenhead.
Hi to your chamber. I'll find Romeo to comfort I you. I want well where he is. Hark you. Your Romeo will be here at night. I'll to him. He is hid at Lauren's cell. Oh, so he didn't run away out of town yet. He wouldn't have known he's supposed to, right? Because as soon as he killed someone before the prince ever showed up, he took off, right? So he doesn't know yet that he's supposed to be vanished. So she says, I know where he's at. He's actually at Friar Lawrence's cell, I think. I'll go there. I'll still tell him to come to you. Don't hurt yourself. She says, okay, well, good. Give him this love token from me. That way he'll know that I still love him truly. Uh -huh. Find him. Give this ring to my true knight. Oh, thank God. And bid him come to take his last farewell. Okay, so she's going to go do that. Now, the way I like to think about scene three is while, Rome, uh, while Juliet and the nurse were having that conversation, Romeo and the friar are having this beginning conversation about the punishment. Friar's just heard what the prince said. He's come back to his room, and he is, Romeo is there, and he's telling him, oh, well, this is what he said is your punishment. And while Romeo is reacting to that, that's when the nurse is going to come knocking on that door and say, hey, I think Romeo's in here and Juliet wants him to come. So that's, that's who all is going to meet up there. Scene three, oh. Friar Lawrence's cell. I wanted to tell you something. All of you know that if, um, oh, I don't know, say your mom murdered somebody and she knocks on your door and says, I just murdered somebody, I, I need to hide out in your house. I'm calling the cops. You do know that if you let them come in, you're committing a crime, right? I'm calling the cops. Yeah, if you knowingly let someone hide in your house who you know has committed a crime, then you can get in trouble yourself. Yeah. Or it's called a betting a criminal, right? So the fact that Romeo is hiding in the friar's room is not a good thing for the friar. What if you know, like, what if your mom never told you she committed a crime? And you you still didn't know, then you didn't know. Yeah. 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 Um, but you're not supposed to. It, that's a betting a, a, a felon, uh, helping someone to get away with the crime. Um, so anyway, uh, He's hiding. Romeo is hiding whenever the friar comes in the room. It doesn't say where he's hiding, so you can imagine where you want. He's in the bed behind a big piece of furniture. I don't know. But the friar comes in and says, come out. Come out, Romeo. You can stop hiding now. I, I can tell you what the prince said. Um, but then when somebody knocks on the door, he's like, hi, hi again. Oh, my God, they're going to find you here, and I'm going to get in big trouble. But Romeo's not listening. He won't go hide. <coughs> Romeo, come forth. Come forth, thou beautiful man. Affliction is enamored of thy parts, and thou art wedded to calamity. Oh God, it's like you're married to, to chaos. It follows you everywhere you go, I guess. You're just a bunch of trouble. Father, what news? What is the prince's doom? What sorrow craves acquaintance at my hand that yet I know not? Too familiar is my dear son with such sour company. I bring thee tidings of the prince's doom. Tidings is kind of a positive thing. Says, uh, I actually bring you kind of a blessing that's the prince's due. And so he's like, well, what, 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 what other than my death could he have said? What less than doomsday is the prince's doom? A gentler judgment vanished from his lips. Not body's death, but body's banishment. Now listen to how Romeo reacts to that. Ha! Banishment? Be merciful. Say death. <sighs> Banishment. Be merciful, see death. For exile hath more terror in his look, much more than dead. Do not say banishment. It's a little bit of irony, right? You would think he'd be happy, right? Same. But he's not. He seems to be more upset. Hence, from Verona art thou banished. Be patient, for the world is broad and wide. No need to get all worked up about it. You just banished from Verona. I mean, dear God, the world's a huge place. You can go anywhere you want. He said, there is no world without Verona. The only world I know is right here, and now I can't be a part of it. Oh, you shouldn't feel something. There is no world without Verona walls, but purgatory, torture, hell itself. Hence, banish it is banished from the world, and world's exile is death. Then banishment is death misturned, calling yeah. death banishment. Thou cutst my head off with a golden axe and smilest upon the stroke that murders me. Oh. That's what makes the 
the friar mad. This is, this is a deadly sin. This is rude unthankfulness. You've been given a gift and you can't even see it. Deadly sin. Oh, rude unthankfulness. Thy fault our law called death. But the kind prince, taking thy part, hath rushed aside the law and turned that black word death to banishment. This is dear mercy, and thou seest it not. It is torture and not mercy. Heaven is here where Juliet lives, and every cat and dog and little mouse, every unworthy thing, live here in heaven and may look on her, but Romeo may not. More validity, more honorable state, more courtship lives in carrion flies than Romeo. They may seize on the white wonder of dear Juliet's hand and steal immortal blessing from her lips, who, even in pure and vestal modesty, still blush as thinking their own kisses sin. But Romeo may not, he is banished. This may flies do when I from this must fly. They are free men, but I am banished. And sayest thou yet that exile is not death? Right, so he says everything can touch Juliet. Uh, every animal, even an insect, for God's sakes. He can listen to her. He can lay it on her skin and touch her, but not me. Not me. Sam. Hadst thou no poison mixed, no sharp ground knife, no sudden mean of death, but never so mean, but banish it to kill me. Banish it? Go, oh, friar. The damned use that word in hell. Howling attends it. How hast thou the heart? My Being a divine, a ghostly confessor, a sin absolver, and my friend professing to mangle me with that word, banish it. A fun, mad man, hear me a little speak. Listen, crazy guy. Can't you listen to the words I'm saying to you? What do you mean you don't understand this? He said, uh, you just want to talk about banishment. I don't want to hear that anymore. Go thou and speak again of banishment. I'll give thee armor to keep off that word. Adversity's sweet milk, philosophy, to comfort thee, though thou art banished. I've been trying to explain to you how this banishment thing isn't as bad as you think it is. Like if you would just listen to my philosophy about it, maybe you could understand. And he basically says, to hell with your philosophy. I don't want to hear it. Banish it? Hang up philosophy. Unless philosophy can make a Juliet, displant a town, reverse a prince's doom, it helps not, it prevails not, talk no more. Oh, then I see that yes, madmen have no ears. Listen. How should they, when that wise men have no eye? Let me dispute with thee of thy estate. Thou canst not speak of that thou dost not feel. You talk about something what? you'll never understand. You're a monk, a friar, a priest. You're never going to marry a woman. You're never going to have sex with a woman. You're not going to kill someone. You're not going to be banished from your home. How could you possibly tell me how to look at this when you have no idea what I'm going through? Which is somewhat of 